Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to our channel. And today we're going to be installing a Raspberry Pi 5 Nextcloud mini server. So let's get started. Now I've been using Nextcloud for the better part of the year since I did the last Raspberry Pi 4 Nextcloud build, which I'll leave a link over here on for that video. I mainly use that for storage, like just for cloud storage, nothing else. What spawned me to actually use Nextcloud was because my wife has a lot of photos and I think iCloud wanted X amount of dollars for 50 gigs and 50 gigs is not even a lot of storage. It's just, you had to pay a ridiculous amount just for that little bit of storage. So I decided to convert to Nextcloud, which is my phone, her phone and everything. And it's been great. For syncing purposes of photos and documents and stuff, the Raspberry Pi 4 handles it diligently. I don't run into any issues with this. And I got up to, I think, six or seven devices um, all synced up, like my phone, then my tablet and her phone and a whole bunch of stuff. Now, where it starts to struggle on the Raspberry Pi 4 is when you start using the apps. Once you start using the web console for Nextcloud, you start realizing where it starts getting sluggish as more data goes in. Hence why I am building this for the Raspberry Pi 5 because the Raspberry Pi 5 is about two times faster than Raspberry Pi 4. And this is like a mini PC server that you could just run around. Now I am installing this onto my desk Pi, which is a case that I used before and I have a video for that if you wanna check that out. And it does support a SATA drive. So that's basically the premise of this. Now I did want to customize it a little bit. So I designed this 3D printed front panel to incorporate the Nextcloud logo. But while I was doing this and trying to make sure the measurements are correct, I stopped the print halfway. I realized that the grill looks really cool. So I decided to 3D print this without the top layer and keep the infill lines to look like a mesh grill. So that's how this came about. Out. Now installing the Raspberry Pi 5 into the desk Pi wasn't straightforward. I did remove the rear panel because of the network port on the opposite side. And we don't have the 3.5 millimeter jack for the audio. And that became a problem with the desk Pi board. So I did desolder that part and everything else worked like it should. Plugging everything in was pretty good. Now I'm gonna show you a little power graph right over here just to show you guys how much energy it's using. So on boot up, it's using about seven watts of power, which isn't too much. And then it kind of like levels down as soon as it's done booting up. And it stays hovering around five watts to six watts right around that area throughout the course of just idling. And then when I decide to transfer a large file through the network, you could see it bumps up all the way up to around 10 watts or so. And it kind of hovers right around there when you're transferring files. And then once it's done, it kind of drops back down to the idle point, which is like six watts. Real quick, today's sponsor is PCBWay. So if you're looking for high quality 3D prints or PCB manufacturing, look no further than PCBWay. They offer high quality and affordable pricing with top notch customer service. All you have to do is upload the STL and you could get a quote in minutes. Once you place your order, PCBWay takes care of the rest. They'll manufacture your 3D prints or PCB with the latest technology and quality control standards, ensuring that it's perfect every time. The best part? PCBWay actually offers free shipping. So if you're looking into manufacturing or mass producing your 3D prints or 3D models, uh, look no further than PCBWay. Now back to the video. Now we're gonna be installing this using the Pi hosted template. So we're gonna jump over to the desktop right now. Now the first thing we need to do is actually image the Raspberry Pi OS into our uh, one terabyte hard drive. So I'm gonna go over to choose OS, go to others, and I am gonna use the light version because we don't need any GUI or anything. So just the light version. As far as the storage, I am gonna choose this, which is my USB to my terabyte hard drive. Now I have to change some settings over here. So we're gonna set the host name and I'm gonna call this uh, my mini next cloud. Uh, enable SSH, that's a must because we're gonna configure everything through SSH. And then as far as the username and password, I am actually gonna call this Pi and Raspberry just to keep it standard. Now, if you are configuring the wireless, you can do this through Wi-Fi. It's just much slower if you're gonna transfer data. So I'm just gonna leave this because I'm not using Wi-Fi anyway. Then you could set local if you want. Uh, I'm just gonna enable this and save. And then I'm gonna to write to the disk. Uh, if you're using a SSD or a spindle drive like mine, uh, shouldn't take too long. All right, so give it about two minutes for it to boot up because it's got to resize the partitions and everything, but you should be able to get to it by now. So what I'm going to do is jump over to my SSH or my terminal, SSH pi at mini next cloud, and it should be able to hit it. There you go. And yes, I am going to take this fingerprint and the password that I entered earlier. So here we are 
on a fresh install of uh, Raspberry Pi OS Lite. So can I H top this? I can. Using about 124 megabytes of RAM and let's do a DF-H and we are using about only 1.7 gigs out of my 250 gig drive. I swapped over to the SSD just because it's a little bit easier and quicker for me to play around with and I don't want to destroy the one terabyte that I was using. So yeah, 250 gigabyte, I'm only using about 1.7. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually install our Pi hosted script. This is the easiest way to get around it, uh, to do it. So we're gonna Google uh, Pi hosted. Uh, should come up over here as a website. So we got Pi hosted right here. It's actually hosted off GitHub. And the first thing we need to do is just grab this command, which will install Docker and set up all the permissions for you and paste it into here. Now you can do this all manually if you want, but the script just does and handles everything for you. Updates everything it needs to, changes all the permissions, so the Docker could be used by users, uh, tons of stuff. Anyway, give this about five minutes, it should install, then we need to reboot before we can install Portainer. So I'm just gonna let this run for a little bit. All right, once it is done, all you have to do is just sudo reboot. Okay, let's see if it come back yet. Oh, that was pretty quick. All right. Now that we are done with that, we can now go over to this command and grab the top one. This one actually will just install Portainer. The bottom one will update Portainer. So I'm just going to do that, paste it into here, hit OK. And it shouldn't be too long. This one is actually pretty quick. It's going to download a few things for our Docker and then it'll run right away. And that is it. So now we can actually hit this Portainer by hitting port 9000. So I'm going to go to mini next cloud 9000 colon 9000 there you go portainer is up i can set up my username so right over here i'm just gonna put something like that and uncheck this you can restore from backup if you got another portainer going on and that is it we have our environment up now we do have to go over to settings and over here for our templates uh, we do have to change it over to a Pi hosted template. So if I was to go over to home, go over to our environment, click on live connect, go to app templates. This one that's officially, that officially comes with Portainer only has like a handful of dockers that you could put in. And it's not even that much. So what we're going to do over here is again, go into settings. Go back into my Pi hosted template, find the version that you're using. We're using ARM64. Grab that, paste this into this URL over here, save. And now if I head back into the container app templates, now we have hundreds. Actually, we're up to like 200 by now. It's just all supported with AMD64 or ARM64. Uh, so whatever you see here will just work. Now, the next step we have to do is just install Nextcloud. So we have two versions over here called Nextcloud and Nextcloud Pi. And what's uh, making me do this video, which I've done this Nextcloud video once before way back when, is because one, we got the Raspberry Pi 5 and man, it, it is due for an upgrade for the Raspberry Pi 4. And two, this is actually gonna be obsolete by November of this year. So this will be removed off the Docker templates and we are sticking with the Nextcloud uh, custom stack that we did. Now in here, uh, we actually added uh, the MariaDB as well as just the Nextcloud from Linux servers. So it's so much easier to install. All I have to do is just type in the database password. So I'm going to do Raspberry and MySQL password. It's going to be Raspberry again. Again, change it to your own password. Don't do what I'm doing. And then the port to what you want to use for your next cloud. And most cases is 9443. You can change this to whatever you want, but 9443 seems to be fine. And remember, uh, the Nextcloud database user will be Nextcloud, and the database is Nextcloud DB. So I'm going to deploy the stack. If you forget, you can always come back here and just you know reference yourself to this. We do need to know this information. All right. So now that everything is deployed, I did have to change the port because I completely forgot that Portainer uses 9443 already. So I changed it to 5443 instead, and it should be running. Everything's all set. So we do have to configure it for the first time, and. I do need to change this to mini next cloud 5443 Oop, HTTPS HTTPS and there we go. 
because we don't have any certs, it's going to say this. I'm just going to accept the risk and continue. And this is the first time we're going to configure this database. So we're going to do Don and then we're going to do Raspberry. Let me double check if I typed that right. Okay, I did. All right, and then storage and database. We're going to have to change this and change it over to MySQL or MariaDB. And the database user is Next Cloud. Database password is Raspberry. And database name is Next Cloud underscore DB. And database local host. This one is Next Cloud DB. 3306. Now, how do I know that? It's because if you go over to here, the name of this is called database nextcloud underscore db. And if you go into that little stack over here, it'll actually tell you the port. Uh, actually, it doesn't yet, but it normally would tell you the port, which is 3306. So I'm going to hit install. All right, once everything is all set up and you log in, this is what you get. Uh, since it's a fresh install, it will ask if you want to install recommended apps like calendar, contacts, mail, uh, notes. Now, if you are just using this for cloud-based storage like I originally was using, I didn't install any of this stuff other than, actually, I didn't install any of this stuff. So you can skip this and just use this as just the cloud storage. But say I did skip it and eventually I do want to add stuff to this, you can just go back to the administration or the apps and add those in later on. So here we are at our next cloud. This is actually pretty standard. If I want to look at photos, I just click here. It's gonna generate the thumbnails for me. I click on a picture itself and it'll load the picture. Uh, say if I wanted to go in and go to apps and add the additional stuff that I wanted, I could go in here and just uh, go over to featured apps. It's the easiest way to search for the stuff that you want. And you can see like these are all there. It's just some of them are not even enabled like brute force, probably enable that. Um, now I've just started recently using this to the extent that is what's built for you could say. Uh, basically a cloud document server or notes, calendar. So I started using all those features and I cannot stress enough how good this is if you want to get away from Google Drive or Google Calendars or Google stuff. Um, you are self-hosting everything so you don't have to pay for the storage that you technically need because trying to get like 100 gigabytes is a lot of money and I'm hosting whatever it's supposed to be. And in this case, it's only 250 gigabytes, but if you threw in a one terabyte drive, you get one terabyte of storage. Say like if I want to enable something called notes, I would come in here, download and en enable, give it about like a couple of seconds, I'll get that through. And now I have my notes app up in here. And then notes app is pretty good because there's actually markdown. So I could go create a simple note, it'll just generate something for me. And over here, I have my checkboxes. If you put through an HTML, it'll actually come up as a link as well. So you could do a lot of stuff with this and you can keep adding on. Now, I personally use calendars, news, notes, and deck. Deck helps organize all the stuff that you see on this channel. Like I put everything, what's upcoming, what hardware I need to review, stuff like that. And on notes, since I'm able to sync all this stuff with my phone, I could write down the notes or any ideas that I have into the notepad. And then I could come to my desktop later on and research the idea without having to look up my phone again. So it's very, very convenient to have Next Cloud. Obviously, the primary use of this is because of the storage. Now I have gigabytes, a lot of gigabytes of photos from way back when, and I'm able to utilize all the storage from my phone and from here. And anytime that I have that auto upload feature, enabled on my phone. I can upload photos from my phone directly to Nextcloud automatically. Anyway, if you guys are interested in seeing more Nextcloud content, I can do like the add-ons that I put in, especially like the Office add-on and a few other stuff that I have that might not necessarily be shown on this video. So if you guys are interested, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And then say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.